people. Well, I think one of the, the biggest research tips that we learned is establish relationships with archives you know, and with libraries, because it's not just going in and asking somebody, do you have this? It's asking, it's people being invested in you as well, going, being able to go that extra, you know, search, you know, contacting us when they found something. And so I think that we've, we've developed collaborative relationships, and that's particularly Allison, you know, really, you know, helmed that whole, you know, approach. But we also traded information with people. If we found something that we thought was useful to them, we gave it to them. And so, in, but in LA in particular, we worked very closely with the city archives and very closely with the um, archive of, Af of, of black photographers at Cal State Northridge. And in both cases, and also with California African American Museum and maybe Clayton Library. So those four, you know, institutions, um, we really searched for them, they looked for us, we worked with them and collaborated with them. You know, we, we knew that there was some material on Tom Bradley. What we didn't, and we suspected that we would have challenges in finding our other archival material. We didn't realize how hard it would be. And I, you know, I think it really tells us something about how we preserve our history in Los Angeles and in other places as well. You know, we don't, the archives that exist, you know, maybe they preserve photographs or they preserve, um, you know, newspapers and the papers and that, those kind of documents, but they don't preserve the moving image. And it's very hard to make a documentary without the moving image. And we find that when their archival materials are not available, that we have to rely on what news re reports. And then, then that's a very different you know, reflection of history. Now, throughout this process, Alice and Sotomayor particularly, who led the research effort, you know, was involved, we had close contacts to probably a hundred archives, and, uh, and we kept, you know, contacting them. Do you have anything on Tom Bradley, or do you have anything on the context in which we can place the Tom Bradley story? After a period of time, because it took us so long to make the film, People, the archives started contacting us if they found anything. And so that was really great. Now one of the most interesting things about archival research, and I think, you know, for writers actually in, in particular, it is, you know, a challenge because we write a script and then we have to find the material to help tell that story, is that a number of the news archives in particular have material that is on film that that they may have a description, but we had to purchase it for its sight unseen. Sometimes it was $800 to purchase something sight unseen to know whether indeed it would be something that would work for the film. And some of our best moments actually are sections that we had to purchase sight unseen. It was a gamble, yeah. And some wasted money, of course, but you know, the research process is a process of discovery. You know, it's really, it's the same kind of research you would do, you know, for any kind of book, for any thing, you know, where we're going in the same kind of, we're holding ourselves to the same kind of scholarly, academic, journalistic standards, you know, that go into any good writing. I think better than most journalistic standards because, because the film lives on beyond any broadcast, beyond any exhibition. So we know that we have to stand the test of time. We have to st stand the test of scrutiny.